When we introduced the BI semantic model, we talked about its architecture having three fundamental components, the, the data model, the business logic and queries, and data access. For a tabular BI semantic model that we implement either with PowerPivot or analysis services, the expression language that we use is called DAX. DAX is an acronym for Data Analysis Expressions, and it's a set of Excel-like expressions and functions and constructs that are uh, purpose-built and tuned for the kind of multi-dimensional tabular analysis that we're doing in these kinds of uh, solutions. Much of what we'll use DAX for in our semantic model is implementing calculations. So we might want to ask ourselves why do we need to put calculations in this model in the first place. There are a few reasons why we like to do this. First, simplifying the end user experience. End users want to use data. They don't want to define it and invent calculations. Next is centralizing these calculations. So some calculations are difficult or could be implemented more than one way. By centralizing certain calculations, we can make sure that they are implemented properly in every end user uh, report. And if we need to change anything about a calculation that's implemented centrally, then that change becomes propagated wherever that, where that calculation was used. Next is advanced data analysis. Uh, DAX is a language that's specifically designed to allow very advanced data analysis uh, with, with pretty simple syntax. So it's just the right tool for the job for many of these things. And the next is providing a way to model data so it reflects the business needs. Some examples of what we mean by that. Um, first, we do use DAX to flatten or in database speak denormalize data to make it easier for end users to use creating predefined calculations. Um, you know, what are some of these, you know, ratios like average selling price, gross margin percent, etc. You know, these are things that typically get implemented in reports or in Excel or wherever the, the reports are designed. Um, these are things that are very easy to put into the semantic model so that those end user reports um, can just pick gross margin percent rather than having to um, know what all the inputs are to every calculation and, and then do it at the, at the report level. Um, next, ranking, running totals, percent of totals, you know, these are a little more complex calculations that, you know, while can be done in Excel and, um, you know, many users know how to do them, you know, these are things we can put into the model so that users can spend less time implementing things like this and more time using them. Finally, um, time-based calculations can be uh, very challenging sometimes. Uh, things like ending inventory, ensuring that when we say, you know, what's the current inventory that, that a calculation goes back in time to find the last time inventory was recorded. You know, these are complicated things to do. The BI semantic model with a uh, DAX language makes many of these things very easy to implement and implemented, again, in that centralized way so that um, they can be implemented once and used many times. So where will we typically write our DAX? Um, three primary places where you'll interact with it. The first is in the power pivot formula bar this is where we'll typically make calculated columns and a calculated column is extending out additional columns on the data that we already have and, and uh, one good example of that would be denormalizing a table so that the product category name is stored along with the product rather than requiring an end user join every time it's used. Uh, second place is in the Power Pivot ribbon in Excel. So as we're browsing our model in Excel in a pivot table, we can actually click this new measure button to create new measures and add them to the model um, right, uh, right from the pivot table. So, it's, so as we realize we need a, a new calculation, we can add it um, right from here. And an area that you, if you're a developer, you may use this a lot more. If you're an end user, you use this much, much less. But we also can use DAX to query semantic models directly using a tool like uh, uh, SQL Server Management Studio to send queries to the database and, and, and get results. So let's look at basic syntax of DAX. Before we even get into writing any of it, let's try to understand what it is that we're looking at. Um, many DAX expressions look just like Excel. So this one says, you know, if 4 equals 4, which obviously will always be true, then print the, then, then this expression returns the string they are equal, otherwise not equal. So very simple. And Excel's uh, expression uh, like this is almost identical to this. It has one more I in that if, but otherwise it's the same. And then 
DAX expressions very often are going to reference tables and columns. So in, in, this, in this expression equals table name, and uh, table names in single quotes because of the space in the word table name, well, the two words table name. Uh, the, the quotes are optional. If your table name doesn't have the spaces in it, you can actually leave those out. And then within brackets, column name. So table name, column name, um, this is how we refer to a specific column in a table, and we'll use this many times in DAX. Operators in the yellow here we have an orders amount column multiplied by a factor of 1.25 and um, and we'll, we'll look at what operators DAX has but like many languages it it has the normal set. DAX very often is calling functions so here we're making a function call uh, using a sum function to sum the orders amount column and then we're using an operator to multiply that out. So there are um, many functions we'll look at. M many of them are just like their Excel counterparts, um, but we'll uh, we'll take a look at them. And then just uh, one thing that, you know, when as you learn DAX, you have to get used to is that some functions return individual values, like this one. A sum returns a value, and other functions can return tables. So if we have a function that needs a table, we might use a function that returns a table and pipe that into that function. So just something to be aware of as you are about to use a function, make sure you're cognizant of what is it going to return and is that what I need in order to um, pass into another function or print out on the screen. And then just finally, um, this is a daunting and intimidating looking list, but this is the complete list of DAX functions and operators. And if you scan through some of these, you know, we have date, date value, um, hour, minute, month, second, you know, many of these are pretty obvious what they do. Um, you know, we have dates, month to date in time intelligence that would give us a, a, a list of dates from the beginning of the month until whatever month we're using in our query. Um, and on statistical, we have average, and you know here we have three averages. One is average, one can average a table. One uh, is just a regular average. Um, and so many of these uh, many of these functions have different versions. But uh, this is the entire list. And over the over the course of the uh, the series, we'll we'll look at most of these. And uh, there there are some you won't use, um, but uh, but many of these you'll use and you become very familiar with.